The Warden is the most unique mob we've ever seen added to Minecraft. With a variety of new mechanics, movements, and its precise ability to sense vibrations, the Warden is something completely alien to the game. With entirely destructible and constructible environments and the ability to manipulate a variety of items and entities, implementing challenging mobs into Minecraft is tough. Is the Warden too easy to deal with? If so, how could it be fixed? Furthermore, we'll be looking at what I believe to be Mojang's newfound interest in the horror element of Minecraft and what it could mean for the future of the game. After all, the Warden is not only alien in its mechanics and abilities, but also in its physical appearance, sounds, and color scheme. I'll be explaining why I don't think we are going to be getting another dimension, but rather, another dimension is going to come to us. I believe we are being hunted by the Warden, and I will explain everything and give my evidence. But before we do, let me just say a quick few words about subscribing. Alright, done. Now help me get to 500k. Alright, let's do a rundown of the Warden. The Warden has 250 hearts, making it the mob which has the most health in the entire game, equal to the Ender Dragon and the Wither combined. That's 50 hits with a Sharpness 5 Diamond Sword, by the way. It hits for a whopping 22.5 hearts on hard difficulty. That means that with a full set of Diamond or Netherite armor, the Warden will still one-shot you. With full Prot 4, that's 2 shots if it's Diamond, and 3 if it's Netherite. The Warden is also relatively fast compared to the speed of most Minecraft mobs and can catch you easily if you don't sprint, and will put up a really good chase even if you do. Sprinting away from the Warden is also substantially harder, as the darkness effect makes it hard to see what's around you. To say the Warden is a formidable enemy is an understatement, but it does have its weaknesses. Most people don't know this, but the Warden is actually classified as an undead mob, and while it took about 50 hits with a Sharp 5 Diamond Sword to kill it, with Smite 5, it only took 26. That also means that if you happen to have a couple instant health potions lying around, you can damage it with that as well. And when I say a couple, I mean a couple of inventories. But, is it too easy to kill? You can have the coolest and most dangerous mob in the game, but if players can cheese it, well, it's going to become very easy to beat, very quickly. Now, I need to preface this by mentioning that the Minecraft developers are very aware of the fact that players will find methods of cheesing the Warden, so it's likely there'll be changes in the future. I mean, they even made official statements about that. But for now, it's not looking so good. Unfortunately, all you really need to kill the Warden is two blocks. Not even kidding. As long as you pillar up two blocks above the Warden, it can't damage you. At all. And once you've got the Warden right where you want it, you can take all the time in the world to kill it, as it won't despawn or burrow back into the ground as long as it stays aggroed at you. In fact, if you're lazy or just can't be bothered, laboriously left-clicking your mouse to whittle down its massive health pool, you can just place a single lava bucket on it and AFK until it dies. Maybe go make some tweets, write some scripts, finish your degree, join other Minecraft servers such as the OG network and do some PvPing and base building, IP in description, now better compatible, and then come back when it's done. Now, I would like to mention that supposedly the Warden's Reach is bugged, and apparently its attack hitbox is at its feet, and that's fine, but even when that's fixed, all you really need to do is pillar up slightly higher, or just use a bow. Okay, what about other methods of cheesing the Warden? Well, if you don't have any blocks on you, you can just dig yourself down into a two-block hole and the Warden also can't touch you. You could also just dig a hole slightly into a wall, which the Warden can't fit into and therefore can't attack you. One good thing about the Warden, however, is due to its fast movement speed, it's very difficult to dig it down and trap it or just build it into a dead end before it attacks you. Minecarts and boats also don't work against the Warden, although it would be a very funny sight. So then, theoretically, how could Mojang fix these issues? Well, issues related to the Warden not being able to reach players can actually be fixed relatively easily if the Warden was given some sort of ranged attack, similar to the Evoker's ranged attack. The Evoker's ground claw attack thing, or whatever it is, would help the Warden attack players if they go into small spaces and walls, and the little vexes which it spawns could help when players build up out of its reach. Furthermore, since the Warden is already able to burrow and come out of the ground, giving the Warden the ability to climb or enter blocks could also solve this problem, while still being very fitting with its character and mechanics. As for its issues with lava and other similar obstacles, I'm sure they should be fixed once the Warden is closer to proper release, so I don't think we should see players dumping a bucket of lava on the Warden and then going about their day as if nothing happened. Alright, but enough about that now. One thing players have been getting even more excited about than the Warden is the new Warden-shaped statue found in ancient cities. The theory goes that this gap in between the statue, which looks like the Warden, is actually a portal to another dimension. Evidence is that the blocks surrounding the gap in the city's center structure are shaped like a portal and are also unbreakable, similar to end portal frames. 
Further evidence comes from the fact that one smaller and similar looking structure is actually named Small Portal Statue. Now, I have a different take on that theory, but let me give some background info first. When the Warden is first summoned by activating a Skulk Shrieker three times, it emerges from the ground, and if it isn't killed, it digs back down into the ground. Furthermore, as you activate the Skulk Shrieker, you see a little particle effect which looks like signals and can hear a loud thump from the Warden as if it's gradually getting closer. So it seems as if it's coming from somewhere, whether that be its home or the underground, to us, rather than us going to it, as you would go to fight the Ender Dragon for example. Furthermore, what happens with Skulk Catalysts? They generate Skulk around them when mobs are killed in multiple directions, as if it was corrupting the terrain. It's taking over and spreading like a foreign parasite or virus. And where can you find naturally generating Skulk? Well, ancient cities of course, especially around the main center structure. So here's my theory. Instead of this being a portal to another dimension, I believe that it may be a portal of which other mobs and entities come through to our dimension. Maybe they spawn in or are summoned into it. We are not going to another dimension, similar to how we go to the end or the nether, but rather, elements and entities of another dimension are coming to us. And why do I think that? Well, first of all, the Warden. It moves far too fluidly and unlike any mob we have in the game at the moment. When standing still, it tilts side to side, its arms move distinctly from the rest of its body, and in general, it's not nearly as stiff as every other mob in the game. Just look at how its body tilts at almost 45 degree angles as it walks. Not only that, but it's got a unique mechanic, and that's the ability to sense vibrations. What makes all the mobs in the end unique? They all have the ability to teleport. The Warden and various Skulk related blocks all share a common mechanic like that, with vibrations. Second of all, what's interesting about the portal blocks in the statue is that while they are indestructible, they are actually movable with pistons, meaning the location entities are summoned may be able to be altered or moved by the player. Third of all, everything here in ancient cities is alien. It looks, acts, sounds, and has mechanics that don't exist anywhere else in the game, as if they are all from another planet. And I believe that's because they are. Look, I'm not a big lore kind of guy. In fact, I rarely mention it in my videos, but ancient cities have given me the strangest lore-related theory. As you walk through an ancient city, you'll notice that Skulk isn't meant to be part of the city. It looks like the ancient cities were built and then Skulk began to infest it, ruining its structural integrity and slowly corrupting it, breaking down the stone, forcing the city into abandonment. The fact that no mobs spawn in the ancient cities intentionally and that Skulk spreads when mobs die on it also suggests that it's an alien and parasitic entity that's incompatible and hostile to all current life in our overworld, killing everything living that interacts with it. So here's my theory about ancient cities. At one point, these cities weren't so ancient and society lived and flourished down here. They may have worshipped the Warden or the Skulk Dimension, like societies worship gods. Maybe some of these structures you can find around the cities were shrines or areas where they worshipped such mythical beings, similar to Japanese shrines, and they do have similarities. I believe this ancient civilization worshipped a mythical being or creature, the Warden, and created a portal to summon it. Why did they want to summon it? Well, because they are living in the deep dark and wanted to gain the Warden's unique vibration skills in order to survive and hunt better, thus thriving in their little society. However, upon summoning it, they realized they had made a mistake with the Warden killing everything and everyone in the city, bringing Skulk and corruption. Maybe the Warden spread Skulk throughout the city by killing its residents, just as Skulk spreads when killing mobs. And there is some sort of evidence to back that up, as often much of the Skulk corruption is focused on points which look like shrines, as if the members of these ancient civilizations were killed at the shrines when they summoned the Warden. You can even find skulls generating randomly at ancient cities, further suggesting people died. More evidence comes from the contents of the chest, which can be found at the quote-unquote shrines, which contain bones and books, potentially the remains of the members of this civilization. Ancient cities may serve as a reminder of what happens when players try to intervene with the mythical Skulk Dimension and the Warden, attempting to interact with it and gain its unique powers. This aligns with Mojang's intentions of the Warden being a creature you shouldn't seek out and fight, but rather should avoid. We are meant to try to avoid the Warden at all costs, which is different to the other bosses and mobs in the game's other dimensions. Maybe that's the whole idea behind the Skulk Dimension. We won't be going to it, but rather it will be coming to us. The Skulk Shriekers are a trap or snare set by the Warden to find any remaining life that enters the city. We don't hunt the Warden, the Warden hunts us. But hey, maybe I'm thinking way too deep into it, and it's just a series of coincidences at the end of the day, no matter what outcome, players will still figure out ways to farm it. 
But let me know what you think in the comments below, and if you agree or disagree with my theory, I'll put a poll on my Twitter as well, so go respond to that. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and are all as excited for the Warden as I am. Be sure to subscribe, thank you all so much for watching.